from Boston? The Tories aren't moving. And any time we try to press them, we lose a dozen men. I think Putnam and the others plan to assemble artillery on these hills. A good shelling might make the Redcoats rethink their strategy. And what of John Pitcairn? That bastard's the cagiest of the bunch. He's appeared time to time to taunt us or send regards by way of cannon fire. Hmm. It's all right, though. He'll have what's coming to him soon enough. Where are we going? Are we being fired upon? Because that sounds like cannon fire. Putnam's just up ahead. You can't me- I don't care much for your excuses, gentlemen. We should be building on Bunker Hill. Breeds is closer to the city, but it is also closer to their artillery! I won't- Oh, damn it. I raised my case. <laughs> I'm going back to Bunker Hill. Good morning, gentlemen. General Putnam. What? I'm looking for John Pitcairn. I was told he would be able to help me find him. He's tucked away inside that city with no reason to leave. As long as that ship continues its assault, we'll never flush him out. But if the ship was silenced... Oh, then poor John might be forced to get off his arse and come forward. You shall fly this flag to signal my success. And I shall speak fondly of you at your funeral. <laughs> yeah, we'll see who lasts last. Cross Charleston without taking damage and go to the ships. Bunker Hill is the largest hill on Charleston Peninsula and the closest to the mainland. During the Battle of Bunker Hill, rebel reinforcements arriving on the Charleston Peninsula headed to Bunker Hill but weren't sure what to do once they got there. Rather than joining the battle which was raging on Breed's Hill nearby, they wandered aimlessly around Bunker Hill, so disorganized they hadn't even brought a picnic. Israel Putnam was here attempting to direct troops, giving valuable instructions such as the famous don't fire until you see the whites of their eyes, which he probably said several times to anyone who'd listen, and to be fair, it's a pretty great quote. That seems to be the only one of his directions that stuck. Many of his other orders were either misunderstood or deliberately disobeyed. Given the disorganized state of the Continental Army at the time, it was probably a little both. This was the site of the first, one of the first skirmishes in the Revolutionary War. During the Battle at Concord, about 90 British soldiers held this bridge while several hundred rebel militiamen gathered on a hill nearby. The British were expecting resistance from disorganized farmers, so when the rebels advanced in a very military manner, the British panicked. Angry farmers are terrifying at the best of times. Officers gave conflicting orders and British formations broke and soldiers ran away. The original bridge was torn down in 1788. A new bridge was built nearby. Of course, it's been rebuilt several times. The image of the British turning tail is excellent fodder for historical reenactments, which Americans enjoy reenacting, but which never seems to be reenacted on our side of the Atlantic. Strange that. Fort Duquesne. This fort sits at, at the junction of the Allegheny and Monongola rivers, essentially the beginning of the Ohio River. In 1754, the French and British governments were fighting over who controlled the territory in the area. When settlers from Virginia began to build a fort, French Canadian forces chased them out, which is weird because Canadians are usually so polite. Anyway, they finished the fort, which was nice of them, and named it after the then governor of New France, the Marquis Duquesne, which was wonderfully thoughtful. In response, the British colonial government sent George Washington to retake the fort at the Battle of Fort Necessity, and then Edward Braddock, the Braddock Expedition. Both attempts failed miserably each being defeated before they ever, they ever reached the fort. Fort Duquesne remained under French control until 1758, when the French troops abandoned and burned it. The British moved in and rebuilt it, naming the new construction Fort Pitt, the location of modern-day Pittsburgh, which makes me think maybe they shouldn't have bothered. Ash. Okay. Not taking damage. Okay. Israel Putnam, more officially known as Old Put, is something of a legendary figure in Revolutionary War history, and possibly its best-known soldier, with a folk hero, if you will. 
Putnam was born in Massachusetts, but later moved to Connecticut to take up farming. He's credited with killing the last wolf in the colony, calling into its den with a musket, a torch, and a rope tied around his feet so he couldn't, so he could be pulled back out. He really didn't like wolves. Oh, and I believe I mentioned he was a folk hero. That's only part of it. He joined the colonial militia during the French and Indian War, where he earned a reputation for bravery in inspiring the soldiers around him. He was captured by a group of Connecticut in 1758 and rescued just before he was so as to be executed. In 1762, he was shipwrecked in Cuba while on campaign there, where you love this. He learned about cigars. He became a habitual smoker and is credited with introducing the cigar to the colonies. After the war ended, Putnam returned to Connecticut, where he was a vocal opponent of the British tax policies that led to the revolution. <coughs> he found the Connecticut branch of the Sons of Liberty. When he heard about the Battle of Lexington and Concord, he immediately signed up for the Continental Army and was named Brigadier General of the Connecticut Forces. He commanded troops at Bunker Hill, and the near success of the rebels there sealed his reputation. Washington had high hopes for Putnam as a leader, and he was named Washington's second-in-command in New York just prior to the Battle of Long Island. Unfortunately, Putnam was a good soldier, but a poor tactician. The Battle of Long Island was a rout. Putnam fared no better at his next post guarding forts on the Hudson River, where he was outmatched by General Henry Clinton. After that, Putnam requested to be assigned to recruitment, and Washington agreed. Still, at least he had cigars. Swimming from here. The main undetected while on board the ships and assassinate a grenadier. Oh, I need to take care of all of them. this thing. Light the black powder in the ship's hold. Aha. So nothing. Nothing happened. Um wooden war club. Why do I have three of them? Anyway, let's stick to the knife for this. God damn it. Redo. Try again. Keep moving. Uh, 
No, can't climb. Get two of them. If they just don't see me when I climb. Go. I just need the patrol guy to finish his patrol and do something else. Come on. You were with your back. That's not fair. Try something else. Come here. Come here. Thank you. What? I'll do it the hard way. By the way, do you have cartridge? Thank you. What are the other optional? Oh, I was just another grenadier. How do grenadiers look? I 
like that with the hat. Come here. Come here. Damn, this thing is heavy. Oh, that was a grenadier. Okay. Climb the mast. Oh, right. Oh, God, about that. Going back. Swim? Swim faster? Never mind. <coughs> Leave the animus. No. Did these guys come back? You do it until you succeed at it. Breed's Hill. Technically, the Battle of Bunker Hill could have been called the Battle of Breed's Hill. This is where the Continental Army built their main fortifications, and so most of the fighting happened here. Breed's Hill had only one thing to recommend it over Bunker Hill. It was closer to Boston which made it easier to fire artillery at the city. Though, of course, one disadvantage of the situation was that it was also a lot easier for Boston to fire back. Nobody knows why William Prescott chose the spot over Bunker Hill. It's possible that since he was walking on fortifications in the dark, Prescott didn't realize how vulnerable the hill actually was until the sun rose. At which point it was a little too late to up and move. Imagine that, I imagine that was probably quite an awkward moment. Charlestown is the name of both a small town to the north of Boston and the peninsula it sits upon. 
Peninsula was the site of the Battle of Bunker Hill, which was sometimes called the Battle of Charleston, as the fighting did span across more than one hill. <coughs> this is also where Paul Revere started his well-known Midnight Ride, which I still think sounds more like something you'd do with a lady. This to the town of Charleston. Well, while it was established prior to 1775, a little of it survived the Battle of Bunker Hill. Continental Army snipers were stationed here to harass British troops, and the British set fire to the town to root them out. Most of the buildings were razed and the press was burned during a raid in January 1776. The only part of the town that survived the war was the street layout. Charleston was rebuilt, however, it's now part of Boston. Yeah, the city doesn't look so good. Oh, convoy back. The enemy advances, and you tremble. They have better numbers, you say. Better weapons, better training. But I do not fear, and neither should you. For what they have in material, they lack in conviction and care. But not us. We have discipline. We have order. And most importantly, we have passion. We believe. So maintain vigilance. Serve your ammo. Ensure a proper line of sight. And above all else, men. Do not fire until you see the whites of their eyes! Okay, can we talk now? Well, I'll be damned! You did it. That was quite a speech. Lies, all of it, I'm afraid. Still, such words have carried us thus far. And what of Pitcairn? Pitcairn. He's left Boston, as I said he would, and set up camp on Molten Hill. There's no good way to get at him. Not with that maelstrom brewing down below. I suppose you could circle around a bit, or wait for us to thin their ranks. There is no time. I will have to chance a direct approach. That's twice today you've proposed the impossible. <laughs> I see no other choice. Maybe it's twice today that I'll achieve your man's a march here, son. I expect an apology on my return. <laughs> Okay, cross the battlefield without taking damage. Ah, oh. Where the hell did that come from? That's not what I wanted, but fine. New Hampshire. Uh, Rhode Island. What the hell are they hitting me? On the move so much. Move and cover to cover. Molten's Hill. The lowest hill on Charleston Peninsula standing at 32 feet, but about 10 meters high. It is sometimes referred to as Molten Hill or Molten's Point. Oh, this is where General Ho's troops landed during the Battle of Bunker Hill. Boston's actually on the opposite side of the peninsula, but Ho took the longer route to outflank the revolutionaries on the left side. This was his excuse for taking the long route anyway, and he was sticking to it. However, Ho made a mistake when he arrived. He saw Continental troops on Bunker Hill and assumed they were newly arrived reinforcements. 
They were mostly just confused and milling around like aimless youths outside a shopping mall. Ho halted to wait for his own reinforcements, which gave the Continental Army time to shore up weak spots in their defenses. This made the battle much longer and more difficult than it might have been. It also means that there was an advantage to the chaos in the Continental Army that day. They managed to confuse their enemies as well as themselves. It's not a bad tactic. To this day, if anyone starts on me, I just spin around and shout about tables until they're too confused and amble off. Reach the top of the cliff. I'm too fast for you. Limit regular kills. Assassinate Pitcairn without being detected. state of things over here. Oh, it's a different place. Bunker Hill. Can I go completely around? How do I air assassinate him? I have to go there. That tree. Oopsie. Are you having a pee? Okay, now I just need you to move back so I can climb the tree. Walking towards me. I mean, it has to be a pole. Finally, Johnson and Kern. <clears throat> you deserve it. To protect Adams and Hancock and those they serve, you meant to kill them. Kill them? Are you mad? I wanted only to parley. There was so much to discuss, to explain. You put an end to that now. If you speak true, then I will carry your last words to them. They must lay down their arms. They must stop this war. Why them and not the Redcoats? Do you not think we ask the same question of the British? 
These things take time. And I would have succeeded had you let me play my part. Part no. of the puppeteer. Or better we hold the strings on another. No, the strings should be severed. All should be free. And we should live forever on castles in the sky. <laughs> you wield your blade like a man, but your mouth like a child. And more will die now. Because of that. Sa ha yu yanere ne o tena am da setta kwe. Ti ni o ne ya ho tena tam da setta kwe. And here they come. We got time for a little bit more. How dare you sneak up on me like that? Why don't you just go out there and just help this cat retreat? Don't ever do that again, you hear me? God damn it! General Putnam. You live. The same cannot be said for Pitcairn. Well done, I suppose. <laughs> but it matters little now. I'm ordering a full retreat. We have lost too many in exchange for too little. If the Tories want this hill so badly, let them have it. Boston is the true prize. Yeah. We have a bigger problem. What do you mean? This can't be right. It says they plan to murder Washington. You fire us. Wait, what did I miss? It went seven complete. My enemy is tenacious. When money failed them, they took to force. But I have slain Johnson and Pitcairn both, ending their plots. George Washington now rallies the colonists and their march towards freedom begins in earnest. Little wonder, then, that the Templars now want him dead. They seek to reshape this land into something cold and ordered, something soulless. And he is an obstacle. I must save him, that his cause can flourish and my people remain safe. But the more I prod, the greater the chance I am discovered. The Templars believe their men lost the revolution. In their eyes, the assassins are gone and scattered, no longer a threat. But I fear they will soon discover the truth, and me along with it. I must tread carefully. Olmstead, 1776. How fares the hunt, Connor? There is progress, but I worry it is not enough. You must strike where you need it most. What if you pursue Charles Lee and your father? What then of Paul Revere and the soldiers at Lexington? Soldiers? There were no soldiers in those towns, only men and women who were forced to defend themselves. Is this not why you fight? To protect your people? Your struggle is the colonist's struggle. In helping one, you help the other. Encouraging words from one who thought mine a fool's errand. <laughs> Make no mistake. I still do, but I can't help but feel some pride in your success. And why should I give you any credit? Then don't. But uh, first, return the robe and the blade and the, and the darts and all of the years of training and knowledge I have bestowed upon you. Return these and then your words may have some merit. You're such a child. I can see why they don't like you. Or you could just admit that you are wrong. Oh, child, please, you've killed two men. One more salesman than soldier. You're gonna have to try a lot harder than that to impress me. Is that so, old man? Or perhaps we should step outside. I will gladly demonstrate how easily I could... Trounce. Connor, this is Benjamin Talmadge. His father was one of us, no need for secrecy. I think he has something he wants to say. 
Achilles tells me you've uncovered a plot to murder the Commander-in-Chief. Yes, but I have only false starts and dead ends to show for it. Not anymore, my friend. Thomas Hickey's your man, and I aim to help you catch him. How? I'll explain on the way. You and I are going to New York. Oh, New York. The Battle of Bunker Hill. New York chests. All New York chests. Anything to do here? Yes, there's a homestead mission. On your chest. Funny. Welcome to Rhode Island. XP gained. New contract assignments unlocked. Talmadge. Benjamin Talmadge was the head of the intelligence for the Continental Army during the Revolutionary War. The British, of course, would have called that an oxymoron. <sighs> Talmadge was originally from New York but moved to Connecticut before the revolution broke out. He served as a lieutenant and then a major in the militia before being asked by George Washington to lead the intelligence department. Talmadge uses his contacts in New York to form the Culper Ring, a league of spies that observed and reported on the British actions in New York. It's possible his contacts also discovered Benedict Arnold's treachery, but that's disputed. After the war, Talmadge returned to Connecticut where he became a merchant and politician. He was elected to the House of Representatives in 1801. John Pitcairn. It's historically debated whether Pitcairn went to Lexington and Concord to seize rebel weapon stores, or to find and arrest John Hancock and Samuel Adams, who were hiding in Lexington at the time. Possibly it was a little of both. Pitcairn's story is that he wanted to find Adams and Hancock to negotiate with them, and he would have been the ideal person to do it. I'm still puzzled as to why he'd try negotiating a truce with an army at his back, though it sort of sends the wrong message, don't you think? Xiao Jun is an assassin from China and one of the last assassins to meet with Ezio de Tori before his death. Jun was born in royal captivity during the Ming Dynasty. She spent her teenage years, teenage years life as one of the favorite concubines of the Chinese Emperor Zhengji. While not an ideal lifestyle, though I wouldn't mind it, it's better than digging ditches, Zhengji's taste for travel meant that by the age of 15, Jun had seen more of the world than most people of the era. Which I suppose you might consider a bright sign if you try not to realize that even some cats had seen more of the world than most people of the area. Uh, in 1521, the assassin order used the confusion surrounding Jagdi's death to infiltrate the Emperor's compound and free some of the concubines, Jun among them. She immediately became an assassin, but never forgot the woman she'd been forced to leave behind. Years later, she returned to the Imperial Palace to free the remaining concubines, only to find that they had been killed by Jagdi's successor, Zhai Jing. Zhai Jing, response to the second attack on the Imperial Palace, was swift and brutal and caught the assassins unprepared. The Brotherhood in eastern China was decimated. Xiao Xun and her mentors survived, but were forced to flee Asia entirely. They traveled to Italy to seek the advice of Ezio di Tori, but only Xiao Xun would finish the journey, arriving in Florence in 1524, shortly before Ezio's death. So that's Chronicles China, I'm guessing. New weapons and firearms. Crafting a weapon. What is Gunner? it? What? Use your help. Suis moi. I want to build her a new knife of steel I make special. I know where to get iron, but the mine belongs to the English. <laughs> will it take long to gather? No. A couple of blasts and I will have what I need. 
I just need you to stand watch. I will wait for you at the mine. It's not far, just off the property. Dude. Whoa. Right, New York. Uh, Frontier. Wait, he said just off the property, so probably over here. Okay, not just off the property. Bring me the harvester. Do I have money for another one? Grape shot. Sure, let's buy grape shot. Grape shot versus smaller ship, heat shot versus bigger ships, and I'm guessing regular for medium ships. What about my assassins? They're not working. Nope. New Hampshire is free. Old Island. Okay. Over there. Let's get a horse. Come on, you shot my horse. Fine, let's do it. You assholes. Can't see anything. Another patrol.
Okay, I'll take the rest of the way. Gunner? What do you have? I need to prepare some explosive. My guess is the bang will bring some unhappy English. <laughs> no doubt. I had best prepare some things myself. Looks like you have a little time. What do you mean prepare things for yourself? Oh, I can use that to set up explosives. That was loud. Sacre Dieu! I think they are coming! Somebody's in our mind! Try that again. God damn it. I think they are coming. After him, boys. Oh, come on. Come here. Stop running into things. Come on. Aim. Ugh. Fine. The only way to clear these missions perfectly is to know what's going blast. to happen. Be careful! Sacre Dieu! I think they are coming! After him, boys! Yeah, let's switch. This is my last one. Just a little longer. Uh huh.
Why can't I move the mouse? Hell. Two hells. Hit it! Sacre Dieu! I think they are coming! What's happening? Got everything! Time to go! I hope she's gonna like the knife because we fought three platoons. What's in here anyway? Main mission, New York. Homestead mission, over here. Okay, one last Homestead mission, then I gotta pack it up. Oh, bear! Two bells, one stone, or something. Yeah, I think I'm gonna switch back to the... Wait, the hanger sword has a better combo. Because it's lower. Two to six, three to six, two four four, one eight two. Yeah, time to call it quits. Let's go with a French review, I guess. For the Hessian X. Yeah, the naval axe is much better. The wooden wall club is faster. Yeah, stick with the rapier. You wanna fight? Yelling at who? You want to fight me? We can fight. No problem. Ah, oh, dogs are fighting. Sheep is sheeping. Ooh! 
that was standing. Yama. Cool, well, sorry, but you're worth money. Did you really think we wouldn't come looking for you? Bugger off! Unless you want to end up like him. Get sure. Call yourself a soldier? Another tough guy, boys! Take him down! Get back! Or put a ball through his temple! Enough? I have him! Back off! Uh huh. Hey, you wanna come walk for me? That's not how you cut ropes. Are you hurt, idiot. Nothing that won't mend. Thank you, stranger. What were they doing? This lot was dragging me through the countryside, trying to make an example of a deserter. Sorry, now who are you? Connor, a deserter, you say? Don't much agree with the fight, and. Uh... I love this country. So there you have it. Big Dave, huh? Name's David Walston. My friends call me Big Dave. Might I ask where you live so I could repay the debt when I'm able? It might take us a while. Us smithies don't earn much coin these days. Our community is not far from here, and we certainly could use the services of a smith. Would you consider plying your trade there? Well, it would make repaying you a spot easier. Mm -hmm. huh, I just might. Cool. Nails. I have a musket. Big Dave can now cast level one war supplies and consumables. Cool. Uh, I think we're done here. Let's hop over to the homestead just to check on things and. And uh, we'll go to New York. Probably tomorrow. Yeah, no other standing missions. Yes, I know. Give me a second. How are you guys doing? Busy. Okay. Stockpile. I like honey. More people, more nice. Gold, iron, lead, limestone, rock salt, silver. 
helpful. Okay, everything's at a hundred percent. Okay. What can we craft? Disinfectant from apples. Nails. I'm missing a tailor. But we have innkeepers. What was that missing dear heart? Big Dave and Lambs. What can we trade? Fox belt. You like fox belt? Okay. And that's it for now. Oh, I need more wolf belts. Um, so that's it for now. See you tomorrow. Um, yeah. Good night. Stay good. Have fun.